Hi my good people, how are you? Wherever you are, how are you? Welcome back again to another interesting video. And this video is actually going to be in parts because it's something that uh, most of you have requested me to do. I've been uh, avoiding it, avoiding it, avoiding it. But now I feel it's the time to stop avoiding it and uh, just come and give you the story. Most of you have uh, been seeing me on social media saying that I am a single mother and a foster mother. And oh yes, I am unapologetically a single mother of one beautiful teenage girl and uh, a, a foster mom of three beautiful girls and uh, I love them so much they have really become part of us so so much I don't know how we would live with my daughter without them uh-huh so <laughs> Sasa where do you want me to start my good people from how I became a single mother to how I became a foster mother eh? and as I tell you this story I'm actually telling it to you to be an inspiration to many because um, I see so many um, single mom feeling sorry for themselves, like feeling it's like um, the world is against them, like um, they are not good enough, you are not even celebrating your motherhood as a single mother. Because there's something that's always reminding you, remember you're a single mother, remember you're a single mother. And the society actually has made it look like it's something bad to be a single mother. But I always tell people, it is better for you to have the divorce papers with you instead of having your family have the death certificate for you. So if you're in a marriage which is toxic, marriage is beautiful and marriage is sweet. I love marriage. I know one day I'm gonna get married. I have a desire, I have a dream, I have a vision to one day have a family again. Yes, I say again because I once had a <laughs> an opportunity to be in marriage that would have actually have made my family have the death, my death certificate and I said no I would rather have the divorce papers than having my family have the death certificates and yes once upon a time you was truly first lady Glado here <laughs> was married yeah I was married and um, actually for seven years seven good years and I thank God for that marriage because um, if there is one thing that I really celebrate out of that marriage is my beautiful daughter Abigail. I always feel so good and so happy about that girl. My goodness, I love her. I love her with every breath that I have in me. She's such a sweet girl, lovely girl, cute, pretty, brilliant, intelligent. You know, that, that kind of a daughter that any mother would ask for. That's my daughter. So anytime I remember my marriage, I, I, don't, I don't want to have space for any bitterness. Actually, on my side, I am happy that it ended. I am happy that marriage ended because, as I said earlier, it was a marriage that would have seen me six feet under. Mm -hmm. It is a marriage that would have seen me six feet under and um, it had uh, taken me, uh, it had actually taken a toll of me. Let me just put it that way. So for me, I am not in the WhatsApp group of those people who cry over the, the, the past marriage that broke. Uh -uh. Me, I'm in the WhatsApp group of those who are telling God, thank you that the marriage ended because it was either the marriage to end or my life to end. And God in his love and his mercies uh, gave me another chance and it is the marriage that ended and not me. I don't know why I, I am, I've never felt <laughs> very comfortable talking about that broken marriage. Maybe one reason being, 
and which I know most of you will agree with me, we all get married not to have that family breakup, but to have a lasting family, a happy family, a peaceful family, a successful, blissful marriage. That's the desire of most of us when we are getting married. So I think for some reason, because um, I had really looked forward to getting married, I was really so passionate about getting married. I was getting married intentionally and knowing what I am doing. I was happily getting myself into that marriage. I had plans for the marriage. I, oh my God, I would see me and <laughs> I would actually see me and my ex-husband growing old together, bringing up our kids together, seeing them grow old and get married. And oh my God, all those things that everybody desires were in my heart. And um, back then as a young girl, I had actually been very intentional to keeping myself pure. Uh-huh. Pure, I mean, getting married as a virgin. Yeah. And I thank God for that because I was uh, very much into serving God, committed in church, and um, definitely the gospel was wait until marriage. And uh, yeah, we are some of those who made it <laughs> to waiting it until marriage to unwrapping the gifts in marriage. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, I was really now thinking or feeling in my heart, now that I have kept myself pure until marriage, something that really baffled my ex-husband, something that he couldn't believe, actually something that made him drop a tear on our first night. Because he was like, like, seriously? How now? Like, you mean? Oh my God, is this the situation on the ground? And I was like, mm hmm, mm hmm. It's all for you. The gift is all for you. Unwrap it. <laughs> That's at least one thing I feel, I feel happy about. That, um, oh my God. I, 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 I really I really held it together not by myself but by the grace of God held it together for God's glory because I remember when I was in high school actually I was the Christian Union chair lady so there is no way I was to be the chair lady and then you tell me that I can mess around no I was actually the person to tell the other young ladies in high school please you guys this is not the time for boyfriends please you guys stop this you know focus let's wait until marriage and all that and, and in church i was a committed youth mm -hmm. and so when it came that time for my marriage i was actually looking forward to it i was really happy and i got married to this guy that we stayed together for seven years and actually we got married in a church wedding which which yes in a church wedding you get the the marriage certificates but in our case now what happened the church we got married in um the pastor in charge was a foreigner in our country and for that reason that uh, license that they usually have for joining marriages there's that booklet the certificate booklets so usually what they do what they used to the, the arrangement was because he was a foreigner and he had not gotten his own independent um license for joining people not for joining people in marriage because actually he joined us in marriage I think the I don't know what it was to return that book back to the government. We call it here Sharia House to return it back to Sharia House. So he was actually to he was actually to to fill the book with the marriage certificate of different people that have gotten married, 
and then now after the booklet is full give it to another pastor to, to return it back to the government offices on behalf but then before that happened um this uh, pastor and his family relocated to the u.s so when they relocated to the u.s um the booklet was not returned back to the government offices so by the time we were realizing that was uh, later 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 in our marriage at that time the rain had started beating us at that time so many people so many things had already started happening and all that and so we got to know that the the, the paperwork was not returned to the government offices through another couple that got married after us actually right immediately after us and this couple the husband had gotten job to the to diaspora and he needed to apply for the visa for both him and his wife so when they went to the embassy they presented the certificate and then they were like Ooh, who this certificate cannot be seen in offices in government offices in government data it cannot be seen anywhere because remember the booklet was not returned so the couple came and alerted all of us who had gotten married in that church during this, that particular period and um now the only option was people to go to the sharia house and redo it again the one that you do at sharia house for 21 days wait i do the security checks just hold on okay mkubwa bari yako niko salama labda wewe ehe kagua kabisa tunaanza anga hapo ehe hiyo haina anga hiyo e nini oh sawa eh so we are doing the security check and then we continue with the story amen amen thank you yeah so i was just doing the routine security check because uh, i'm entering actually somewhere that we need to do the security check yeah so the the what am i saying those who wanted to now have valid marriage certificate because now what we had apparently because wasn't in the um, in the government data was considered was considered a not valid document so actually now what happens is that everybody who wanted a valid marriage certificate was to go and get another one from sharia house this thing is not bringing out the coin the, the parking the parking chip uh-huh you get me and uh, many of uh, the couples that we got married at the same time actually went to the sharia house and did the did that that they did the vows and got now the proper marriage certificate but for us remember that's the time now the rain had started beating us in our marriage and um, conflicts here and there, things are not working out, things are really bad in our marriage. So actually nobody saw the need to take that step. And that's how I ended up with an invalid marriage, marriage certificate, which I thank God. Because that means if that document remained as valid as it was supposed to be, we would have continued with the divorce case in the court uh, running up and down to get the divorce papers but God did it in his own ways that's what I usually say you see how we are told that all things work together for the good I feel like it worked for my good because now I don't have to run up and down um, trying to look for the divorce papers because actually our marriage details were not entered anywhere in the government data and um, actually now when the marriage ended in uh, after seven years of being together <laughs> seven years of being together that time my baby was too small because we got the baby later 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 in marriage um, the marriage ended and part one ends there that's how I became a single mother 
and I will come back to let you know now how did I again become a foster mother because I hold two titles and I'm happy about the two of them I thank God I am happy I feel blessed so I love you I think this side I can get some parking I love you my good people and I will be coming back again to let you know how my journey as a foster mother happened I had not planned to be a foster mother actually I had not I had not planned to be a foster mother it is actually something that just happened by God's design that's what I say so I'll be coming to tell you how I became a, uh, I became um, I became a foster mother and actually I'm now really enjoying a single mother taking care of other three kids that are not mine they don't speak my language I took them from the slum and now they are part of my family and if I'm to get married I would trust God to have a, a partner or a husband that will actually appreciate my own daughter who is a teenager and uh, appreciate these other three girls because where would I take them? They're already part of my family. Yeah, so that's how my marriage ended. And uh, I thank God. Maybe one day I'll give you the details of what would have made me die in that marriage. And I'm happy it is the marriage that died and not me. That's why today I can't allow anybody. I can't allow anybody to make me feel bad about being a single mother. Because would you have felt bad, good if I was dead in that marriage? Would you have clapped for me if I waited and died in that marriage? So why should I now give you the privilege to condemn me as a single mother or to talk bad about me or to judge me when I actually moved out to save my life? So that's why I am contented, I'm happy, but I always say in my heart, now that it has been, is it 14 years or 12 years? I think 14 years, 12, 14, there, of being alone. And uh, that's good and sufficient time that my heart has now healed and I cannot move forward and give marriage another trial because I believe in marriage and I know marriage is beautiful when you have the right person and marriage is actually so sweet. So if you're in marriage and it is good, hold on to it, fight for your marriage unless it is violence. There is violence in it unless there is threat of your life. But if it's just the normal couples uh, 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 arguments here and there, those ones you can work it out. What I can't encourage anybody to be patient with is violence. Your life is more precious. Remember I started by saying you would rather have the divorce papers with you instead of having your family have your death certificate. I love you so much and I'll be coming to tell you about how I became a foster mother and how my journey has been as a foster mother. Love you and I can't wait to interact with you in my next video. I love you and please on our YouTube Touching Lives Through Love. Like, share, comment and subscribe. And turn on the notification bell so that you can be getting a lot of these beautiful qual good quality videos that I bring all the time for you and to you. Love you and until the next video. Bye bye.